Experience a land of silk and textiles, exotic flavors, friendly smiles, and meditative rituals. Come take a walk down the long path of Thailand's traditions and meet those who are keeping memories alive within the United States. Join us this week for a delightful visit with the Thai Americans. Coming up next on World in America. Thailand, a country of stunning beauty and subtle contrasts, where evocative traditions coexist with humble courtesies and the flavors of a long, lively heritage burst forth at every moment. Its location in the heart of Southeast Asia has made Thailand a nexus of multi-ethnic influences, while its contemporary neighbors include Malaysia, Cambodia, Laos, and Burma. Thailand has incorporated language and customs from India and China. Thailand is the only Southeast Asian country never to have been colonized by European powers. As a result, its vibrant religious and cultural history has flourished freely since ancient times. Today's Thailand merges its old and new worlds in a fusion of colorful activity. The agricultural industry employs many Thais. And Thailand is one of the world's foremost rice producers, but Bangkok also boasts numerous service industries and is an emerging hub for commerce, industry, jewelry, and electronics. Approximately 95% of Thais practice Theravada Buddhism. This faith permeates every aspect of Thai culture and is central to their identity. Buddhism has no doubt influenced the characteristic traits of Thai society. A deep culture of respect for seniority and patience towards others. The traditional Thai greeting, known as the Y, also expresses these beliefs. Offered by a younger person to an older person upon meeting, the hands are pressed together in prayer-like fashion and followed by a soft bow. The Y and other courtesies are a common part of everyday life. When we return, we'll learn more about this gentle and respectful culture. We'll speak with Thai Americans to hear more about their early journeys in the United States and get a feel for some of Thailand's exquisite arts, such as its delicate porcelains and shimmering hand-spun silks. This and more coming up next on World in America. to World in America. The Thais began settling in America in the 1960s, and their population has grown steadily since then. According to the most recent census, there are over 150,000 Thai residents living in the U.S. Los Angeles is the home to the greatest concentration of Thai immigrants, but there are also large populations living in Chicago, Houston, and Philadelphia. In the mid 60s, you know, a lot of Thai professionals moved here for academic and socio-economic reasons. While the immigrants left their homeland seeking better economic conditions, this too had its price. Highly educated Thais often had to take jobs for which they were greatly overqualified. I'm sure that all the immigrants have to work more uh, harder to gain recognition. But Thai people, they are hard worker. One can adjust to hard work, but culture shock? That's another challenge. Faced with unfamiliar customs, climate, and other changes, America can take some getting used to. There's a lot of the difference between Thais and American, like a culture, food, weather, you know, because we have one weather in Thailand. <laughs> And it's not just the weather that's different, it's a whole new way of life. The way of life here in Thailand is very different. You know, like here, you know, like when I first came, it hit me 
part too, because here you have to help yourself. Everything. Another hurdle to overcome is, of course, the English language, which is so vastly different from the Thai's native tongue. For most people, you know, especially in the beginning when they come to this country, is the language. One interesting feature of the language is that most common words have only one syllable. Multisyllabic words usually concern government, religion, or academic subjects, and were borrowed from other languages such as Sanskrit. In the old days, it was like a, um, a monosyllable language, you know, simple, simple language. And then later on, when they moved further down and they uh, learned um, Bali and Sanskrit, which come from like uh, Buddhism, you know, most Thai are Buddhists, you know, so the, the, the language that they wrote is in Bali and Sanskrit. So they learned that and then they has adopted that language and modify our language to be more polysyllable language, you know. The written form of Thai was also adapted from Sanskrit. Unlike English, the spelling of a Thai word usually reflects its exact pronunciation. So if you're trying to learn the language, reading really helps. The first Thai alphabet was invented by King Ram Kham Hang in the 13th century you know, the alphabet that we use today. The, the modification is not that much. That's why even now, I can read the stone inscription that was written in the 13th century. I can make it uh, what they say, you know, because it's the same syllable, you know. And mind you, Thailand have many. They have 24 alphabets and 15 vowels. Thai is a tonal language. Although to Western ears, certain words may sound alike. Their meanings are determined by the way in which they're voiced. But if I say kai 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 to, to you, it's probably the same, right? But actually, each one seems different. Kai is who? Kai, that's sail. Kai is an egg. Kai is like chicken. Who sell the hen's egg? But, you know, to your ear, it's probably the same. You know, like my daughter loved it. She said, kai 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 kai, <laughs> you know. There are five tones, middle, low, high, rising, and falling. But even when the differences are explained, it's still sometimes hard to tell them apart. No, kai kai kai, that's lower. Kai is a little bit higher. Wow. You know, but they meant differently. Yeah. Culturally, the Thais have an advantage in America. They love to talk to strangers, and their warm smiles help pave the way for conversation. Thai people are always eager to share their culture with others. While the country has created many exquisite arts, Thai porcelain is a particularly lovely and ancient form. These are the, the, the figure of a male and a, a female dancer in the dance uh, classical dance costume. The porcelain sometimes, they, they have been doing it long, long time, since the 10th century, you know. It's uh, made of five color, they call it benjarong, you know, five color porcelain. This is very famous. This is the old porcelain. Uh, we call it in Thai benjarong. Benja means five. So they have like five colors in here and it's hand paint each one individually, you know, it's made in the old day. And nowadays, they need, uh, they, they, they made like the other one, you know, they're more like more gold and all that. Uh, they, they still make it now, but it's not like in the old day. They try to keep that tradition, but, you know, it's beautiful too, but it's a little bit different. And this you see here, it's like a, just, you know, like a plate that where you put food, you know, in the modern day, you know, sometimes they make it like so that you can stack it up, you know, it's good, when, easy when you put it away, you know, in a different size and also easy to, to pick which, uh, which size you want to use, you know, so we stack up like that, like a, like a tree. <laughs> Thai textiles also have a long history and the stunning art of silk making dates back almost 3,000 years. Each hand-woven piece is unique and cannot be duplicated commercially. 
Additionally, the fabric has a sheen that comes from two types of silk thread, causing it to change colors in varying angles of light. This is an example of the textile in Thailand that I'm talking about. This is Thai silk and it's hand woven with the gold thread. We use this for uh, we use this for like a scarf or like a, a cover up over your shoulder, you know. All these are handmade, you know, which uh, takes so many months to make one, uh, one shoulder wrap around like this one, you know, but it's so beautiful. Sometimes they do it, they weave it with the gold thread, you know, in the design, Thai design. It's come out so beautiful. Everyone can make it, you know, only in some family that they have passed along in that family, you know, it's so beautiful. And these are the Thai design, and they have name for that, but I, I don't know how to explain it to you, you know. There's so much to celebrate about Thai culture, and the Thai Americans enjoy acting as informal ambassadors for their homeland. Hopefully, you know, by being here, we are able to share uh, our part of our country and culture and maybe you would like to know more about Thailand and have the desire to go visit Thailand. This is what I hope. And especially this year, you know, uh, many travel magazines name Bangkok, you know, Thailand as one of the best cities to visit, which I agree. The joys of Thai culture seem boundless, and there's more to come. When we return, we'll head to Thai Pavilion Restaurant to learn the recipe for authentic Pad Thai and get a taste of home-cooked dumplings. And then, we'll experience the festive traditions and meditative rituals of Songkran, Thailand's New Year celebration. All this and more next on World in America. We're back with more World in America. Even if you don't know much about Thai culture, chances are you've tried Thai food. And there's a good reason the cuisine's popularity is soaring. Not only is it amazingly healthy and filled with fresh ingredients, it's also a taste delight unlike any other. Here at Thai Pavilion Restaurant, you'll find good food and warm hospitality, all served up with that famous Siam smile. The name of the business is called Thai Pavilion, and there's actually a little story to it. Uh, my parents met each other at a place called Italian Pavilion back in Thailand, Bangkok, Thailand. And ever since then, uh, they said that if they ever opened up a restaurant of their own, they would call it Thai Pavilion. One of Thailand's best-known dishes is Pad Thai. At Thai Pavilion, they perfected this one-pan wonder. They'll begin by stir-frying egg and chicken in a hot pan and then adding in the noodles, cooking them to a firm yet tender consistency. The next step, the sauce, which combines tamarind pulp, fish sauce, sugar, and a dash of chili. The key is marrying together the sour, salty, sweet, and spicy flavors. Sometimes you'll find pad thai offered with ingredients like tofu, broccoli, or meat. Hot from the pan, the pad thai is ready for garnish, bean sprouts, carrots, basil, peanuts, pickled turnips, a dash of lime, however you like it, you'll be sure to enjoy it. Every Thai restaurant, including ours, has to have Pad Thai noodles. Pad Thai noodles is actually a, a famous dish. It's a traditional dish. Uh, it was created back in the days um, because we always had rice noodles, rice with every item, with every food. So we decided to come up with something different. We added noodles to it. Noodles is actually a cuisine of Chinese, but since back in the days they had to create something different, they created pad thai. Pad meaning saute at a fast speed, a high temperature. Thai is thai. Common thai ingredients include chili, garlic, lime, lemongrass, fish sauce, peanuts, and of course, rice. The menu offers myriad delicious dishes to choose from, including Thai curry, satay beef, and mango sticky rice.
We have the Kung Ho Pun Sen. First what we do is we put in galanga, a little bit of garlic and cilantro mixed in. Then we saute the glass noodles, the vegetables aside and the ground pork to give it a nice fast temperature so we don't have to cook in the clay pot too long. This is some of our dishes that we're serving here at Thai Pavilion. One of them I would like to tell you is actually the beef satay. It's considered as an appetizer. It's served with a little bit of peanut sauce, also some cucumber salad. It's marinated with Thai herbs and spices, and it comes in a skewer style. Followed by a little bit of tom yum kung soup in a clay pot. It is a traditional Thai dish, as I mentioned previously before. One hot and sour favorite is tom yum soup. Fragrant herbs like cilantro and galanga season the broth, which can be made from chicken or vegetable stock. Just add meat, veggies, and garnish, and dip into some scrumptious soup. This is just rice flour. The appetizer menu also features dumplings made with meat stuffing. They're easy to eat, but they're even more of a treat when they're prepared fresh from the kitchen. It's possible to make dumplings with already prepared rice wrappers, but here at Thai Pavilion, they make them from scratch. Similar to a crepe, the rice dough is thinly spread on a hot surface. After they've cooked, and it only takes a few minutes, a dollop of filling is added. Presentation is everything, and a few artistic folds of the dough make these dumplings look nice and taste even better. For appetizer dish, it's Thai, steamed Thai dumplings, pardon. It comes in a rice flour. Notice the rice, uh, very, very important Thai culture. Served with a little bit of a Pardon, shallots on top and sprinkled it with garlic, okay? And followed by a little bit of corvina, which is also known as sea bass, a white sea bass. It's done filet, pan fry, top off with a tamarind sauce. A Thai name for it would be called lat prik. It has a little bit of garlic, shallots, followed by a little bit of pad thai noodles. This one I stated before is a famous rice noodle. This one is done with chicken, tofu, scallion, some eggs, and some peanuts grounded on top, okay? Followed by a little bit of the Penang beef, I can see that. It has a little bit of string beans embedded. Top off with a little bit of lemon leaf, some basil, some chili, and it's cooked in with coconut milk, a main ingredient, and red curry sauce, which is a Penang curry sauce. It's time to celebrate Thailand's most important holiday, Songkran, the Thai New Year Festival. Songkran is observed from April 13th to April 15th and includes a full week of lively traditions and meditative rituals. Buddhism permeates every aspect of Thai life, and during Songkran, people will gather at the temple to pray and offer thanks for a new year of life. I'm actually currently a, a volunteer here at the temple and today I'm actually a speaker in, uh, in the English language for those people who come to our temple and are not aware of the languages, it might be a barrier to you. I am here for that convenience and to inform you what our necessity, why we celebrate what we do and why we have this event annually. Today is actually Songkran, which is actually known as Thai New Year's. We have eight monks today residing for our temple for this event. Today is a special day for the Thai people. Songkran means moving. Every year it varies, it changes, but the reason why we celebrate it so much is, as you know, Thai New Year's and Chinese New Year, anything with New Year symbolizing a new start, a new life. It would celebrate it for three days, April 13 to the 15th.
ก็จะจําเราไปถ้าเกิดเราเป็นคนที่ทําดีล่ะท่านใดมีเครื่องสัมผัสทานเข้ามาถวายก่อนแล้วก็ท่านที่จะใส่บาตรก็ค่อยใส่แล้วก็ One practice involves food offerings made to the monks at the temple. This ritual honors ancestors who have gone before, as well as the deep traditions within the Buddhist faith. On the first day of the incoming year, people don their best attire, prepare delicious dishes, and travel to the temple to present food and other gifts to the monks. After each person has made their offering, everyone will remain until the monks have finished their meal. the temple we try to do a merit worthy thing such as offerings money to the temple itself and as you can see behind me is actually the money tree known as also a stone papa which is symbolizing um, a wealth as you can see we put money in it as symbolizing wealth and prosperity and the reason why we use it as a tree is tree has to grow from something this is where our life grows We're away from home, so far away. Thailand's on the other side of the world, so having a temple here brings us in unity, and it unites us in a community that we need to preserve, to preserve our culture, preserve our religion, and to actually prolong it. Thai New Year symbolizes a change, a transition. Songran meaning it's a transition, a change, a move forward. As you know, that whatever happens in the past, we can't change it. We can only make the future better. Sand symbolizing shelter. It symbolizes um, something that you set up for yourself in this life and the next life, building up some shelter for yourself. In addition to that, we have the money tree. The money tree symbolizing tree as a wealth. And you put money in there, it causes a wealth. The tree grows from it, and you prolong your life from there too. There's many little symbolism here and there, and we try to come together today as to practice and prolong the. I told you that the culture before that. Songran coincides with the end of the dry season in Thailand, and one tradition involves the splashing of water as a symbol of cleansing and renewal. Younger people also pay respect to elders. By sprinkling scented water and offering them blessings for the new year, other songran rituals include the tying of strings, where one person ties string around another's wrist while giving a short prayer or blessing, as well as dusting white powder on one's face for protection from harm. To pay homage to the Buddha, gold leaf is applied to a statue, and gifts of flowers, candles, and incense are offered. Celebrations always include traditional music and dance, and the graceful choreography is often accompanied by unique instrumentation. Everyone who experiences Thai culture will be surrounded by beauty and welcomed with kindness. While food and fun might be the first draw, you'll soon find more to love. 
The Thai Americans' long tradition of gentle humor, daily thankfulness, and mutual respect always create enduring relationships and make them wonderful neighbors to have in every American community.